Driver 2 is such an awesome game. It's like one of the best PlayStation 1 games ever. I would say easily in the top three, at least for me. Hey, that rhymed. You see? Um, Driver 2 is a game that a lot of people kind of dismiss as a decent game, but not like the best of the best. And I do too. Uh, when I think of like my favorite PS1 games, I'm thinking Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear Solid, maybe Crash Bandicoot or Spyro. Never think of Driver 2, but it's definitely up there. I would say Driver 2 is my third favorite or fourth favorite PS1 game behind like Crash 2, Metal Gear Solid, and of course Final Fantasy VII. It really is that good. It's such a great game. It's a game that's way ahead of its time. You have these huge cities you drive around in. In this game, you can also uh, get out on foot, so it's kind of like almost GTA, just without the shooting. There's a lot of different cities too, and there's a lot of different cars in the game. It's amazing how big the game worlds are in this. It doesn't feel like a PS1 game. I mean, the graphics obviously look like a PS1 game, but for the amount of different types of uh, gameplay features in the game, for how big the cities are in the game, how many cities there are, it's unbelievable. This is a PS1 game. If, like, it had better graphics, if the graphics were improved, just gameplay-wise, it feels a lot more like a PS3 game. It's a game that's way ahead of its time. I mean, way ahead of its time. The thing is, with Driver 2, a game this good, with everything going for it, you wouldn't even expect a good story. That's not even on your mind when playing a game like this because the gameplay is so fun. But it also has a fantastic cinematic story. It's like playing inside a movie. What it really reminds me of is like a Steven Seagal movie from the mid 80s to early 90s. It's like I'm playing in the world of Above the Law with those like early 90s, 80s, 70s cars, a lot of like gritty cop drama, it's fantastic. And the gameplay is very varied, there's a lot of stuff to do. It could be something like just driving somewhere, trying to reach a place in time, because there's almost always a time limit. Tailing someone, which means you can't get too close or you can't get too far. You have to stay in that perfect green zone or you lose. Escaping from the police, chasing someone down, there's just so much gameplay. And of course, if you want to leave the story mode, there's little car related games outside of the story, like just driving through checkpoints, racing. It's like everything you can think of in a driving game, this game has it, in droves. It's unbelievable, all of this is in a PS1 game. The one thing that could probably turn off a lot of people from Driver 2 is the ridiculous difficulty. I mean, every single mission you play is hard, really hard, like Nintendo hard. This game does not hold your hand. If you screw up, if you make the slightest mistake, if you make a wrong turn, if you don't cut a corner once in a while, you will either run out of time, your car will get destroyed by the police, you will get too close or too far from the person you're tailing. It's like you have to have almost a perfect run. Your mission run has to be like 90% perfect. I'll give you the perfect example. I started the game off and I was a little out of practice and the first mission is trying to get somewhere in time. You have like two minutes and a few seconds to basically drive all the way across the city. And when someone just starts a game, they don't really know the city. So I took the long way versus the short way because I just, you know, I didn't really know the best way to get there. And I literally got to the car I was supposed to get to a second too late. I was a second off and I lost the mission because of that. This happens a lot, whether you run out of time just in the nick of time or your car just gets destroyed right before you complete something. You're chasing a train, oh man, you better cut corners or else you're gonna lose that train. You're being chased by cops, the cops in this game are relentless. They don't even feel like police pursuing you. They feel like unstoppable terminators. They just bombard your car until their cars are destroyed. They have no regard for your life or their own. It's insane how hard the police are in this game when they chase you. The one thing you don't really have to watch out for in this game is the pedestrians. 
they just run out of the way when you drive into them. Like, you can't run anyone over. I guess there were, like, zero car fatalities in the 70s and 80s. I guess people back then were a lot more agile, and they could just, like, run out of the way of any car anytime they feel like it. I guess they needed to do that to keep the game's, like, rating lower, but it doesn't even make sense because the story in the game is so adult. It has such a gritty adult theme. It feels like a cinematic movie for grown-ups. There's nothing about this game that says, hey, it's a game for kids. Let's not include running people over. Kids wouldn't like that. The thing about the first two driver games is they're both really good. And normally I would say, like, a game that I really like or a franchise I like, the successor of the first game always improves on the first, but I don't think, like, there was much improvement on the first, because the first game, Driver 1, that was already a quality title, there wasn't really anything that bad about it. I guess maybe this game is a little bit bigger, now that I think about it. And, of course, you get that option to get out of your car and get into other people's cars, so it's a lot more like GTA, that's definitely a good thing. But it's also kind of a bad thing. The, uh, as good as the, like the racing and driving simulation is in this game, like the driving is really, really realistic. What I don't like is the actual running around on foot. It feels very clunky when you run around on foot. It doesn't feel like you're controlling a person. It again feels like you're driving a car when you're on foot. It's weird. You kind of have to get used to moving on foot. It's a good thing that there's really not much running around on foot. It's just like a tiny little mechanic that you barely ever use. So my final verdict here, well, it's simple. If you like good games, this is a game to check out. Not even driving games, not even open city games, not even racing games. Just if you are a fan of quality, because this game is quality that pretty much anyone can enjoy outside of like, I guess, hey, children. Yeah, this is definitely not a game for kids. Um, it's too hard. The story theme is too gritty and real. It's, you know, it's a gritty cop drama, basically. So yeah, the, despite the fact that you can't run people over, don't let that fool you. It's not a game for kids, and I don't really think kids would really enjoy this much. Or at least the story mode. I, I mean, I played this as a kid, and I enjoyed it, but the story mode is a little too hard. I, I don't even remember if I passed the game in story mode. What I really liked about the game as a kid, though, is just driving around, like free driving jump into a city and just drive around. I, I found that fascinating for some reason. I don't know. Playing it now, though, what I really like is the story. I like the challenge and the difficulty because when I fail, it's because I did something wrong. A lot of people would compare Driver 2 to something like GTA 3, you know, the first official 3D uh, open world uh, GTA game. Or, you know, of course, Mafia. Well, just think of like an earlier 3D open world you know, crime type game, uh, but it's really not like GTA 3 or Mafia 1, uh, simply because you're not running around on foot and shooting people. It's all about the driving in this game. It really is a lot more a car simulation in an open world than like an open world crime game. And the driving in this game is a lot more realistic and a lot better than the driving in GTA 3 and Mafia 1. It's really hard for me to compare Driver 2 to something that came before it. It's a unique game in that regard. I mean, obviously, it's almost a carbon copy of Driver 1, but as I've said, it's nothing like Mafia. It's nothing like GTA 3, other than the fact that you drive in those two games. I think it's something that I can compare to movies more than games for when it was released. Like, I can compare it to a lot of Steve McQueen movies, a lot of um, Clint Eastwood movies, a couple of Chuck Norris movies, a Steven Seagal movie, a Jim Belushi movie. It's like every cop movie from the 80s. A no-nonsense cop driving around in like that classic 70s, 80s, like big, thick car that's made out of metal and steel versus today's cars, which are made out of failure and plastic. Just bringing law to the lawless being the Judge Dredd of the 80s. That's really another group of people that should definitely play this game. People that like those action-packed and like drama-packed cop movies from the 80s. Just any movie starring Steven Seagal and Arnold Schwarzenegger where they played a cop from 1980 to 1989, that's what this game is. 
this is just a quality title. I have nothing but great things to say about this game. It's worth a try if you like video games, period. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more classic game reviews. Goodbye, my friends.